All right, so good morning. We're going to go ahead and tuck our chin and bow our heads and know that God is so good, that God is right here and right now in ease and grace and peace and joy, and each of us are one with it, and that it has us, it holds us, it knows us as we make our way to truth. And we trust that we will see miracles where we once saw lack and limitations and that will be given solutions where we once saw dead end. So we commit to remembering that we are each immersed in God's holy ecstasy and audaciousness where all things are possible and where all things are perfect. We give thanks for this day of miraculous encounters and may we always remember that this is given to us not just for our own good, but that we might be fearless extensions of God's love. And so for this and so much more, we give thanks and we let it be, and together we say, and so it is. Amen. Amen. So we got the word that Bonnie is not going to be on the call today. We can continue to hold her in prayer. We're on Lesson 168 with A Course in Miracles. Your grace is given me. I claim it now. Meaning that God's grace is always available. That we have sometimes the experience of running roughshod or things being jagged. And in every single one of those corners, every single one of those crevices, we could smooth it out with the grace of God. We could say, God, I want grace here. If the Blessed Mother can ride a pony to to Bethlehem while she's nine months pregnant and be known as someone who's full of grace, then it's an option for me. And grace is such a gift. It's not relegated to ballerinas. It's your way of being. Could you imagine yourself moving in grace? We like to say, like, move at the pace of peace, but could you imagine yourself being so synchronized with the choreography of God that people looked at you and said, damn, that woman is full of grace. Have you ever met anybody who was full of grace? Have you ever thought to yourself, damn, I want what she's having? Well, today's your day. So take a moment and just suck in some grace with me. You know, breathe in some grace. Claim it today. Say, today's the day. You know, I may have been like a a rough and tumble chick from Jersey, but I'm going to know and claim myself as a graceful being. I'm going to see what that feels like in my bones, even if I'm just playing with it, even if I'm just playing a part. Because, you know, sometimes you do have to fake it till you make it just to see that it's an option for you. Your grace is given me. I claim it now. God speaks to us. Shall we not speak to God? He's not distant. He makes no attempt to hide from us. We try to hide from him and suffer from deception. He remains entirely accessible. He loves his son and daughter. There is no certainty but this. There is no certainty but this. Yet this suffices. He will love his son, his daughter, forever. When his mind remains asleep, you know, and that's a lowercase h, so it's when our minds remain asleep, he loves us still. And when our minds awake, he loves us with a never-changing love. This is, this is the morning. It's a love note from God to you. God saying, do you know that I'm sitting right here as close as your breath, as near as your hand? Do you know that if you roll with me, you'll roll with grace? Do you know if you roll with me, nothing will ever hang you up or string you out? Do you know that I suffice? Do you know that all your needs are met in me? Not just met, but exceeded. Do you know how much I love you? And do you know sometimes how funny it is, how you kind of roll in a rogue way, you know, where you go off like a lone wolf trying to figure things out with spit and duct tape? 
<laughs> and I love you still. It goes on to say, but if you knew the meaning of his love, hope and despair would be impossible. If you but knew the meaning of his love, hope and despair would be impossible. So doesn't that want to make you like lean and say, Holy Spirit, man, I might not have gotten the meaning. I may have missed the definition. Maybe I was absent that day. But today is the day that I want to know and be intimate with the meaning of his love so that I can sweep despair and, um, and the hopelessness from my doorstep. Those, those are rags that I need to send to the Salvation Army. I'm not wearing that shit anymore. I'm decked out in the, 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 the designer divine cloth of God. If you but knew the meaning of his love, hope and despair would be impossible. That's not just a, a, an invitation. That's a promise. For hope would be forever satisfied. No need to hope, my love. You don't have to hope in God. In God you can know. In God you can affirm in God you can expect. You don't have to hope that God loves you. You can expect God to love you. And hope is no longer necessary. Despair of any kind is unthinkable. If you know God and know the meaning of his love, despair is like a weird commercial break. It's like, why are you listening to the commercial break? You don't need any commercial breaks in God's show. You know, is that son trying to sell you something? You don't need anything. His grace, his answer to all despair. For in it lies remembrance of his love. And would he not gladly give the means by which his will is recognized? His grace is yours by your acknowledgement. So it's asking a question and then it's giving us the answer. It's like, do you think God, don't you think God would give you the way to recognize him? Well, oh, yeah, yeah, hopefully God will give us the way to recognize him and get intimate with his voice. Yeah, that, that would be really helpful. Oh, okay, great. Well, do you want to know how to do it? Yes, I do. His grace is yours by your acknowledgement. What? Yeah, you just need to acknowledge that this is the truth. That's it? Yeah, that's it. That's the fancy handshake to get me into this, this realm of grace? Yeah, that's it. I now acknowledge that God's grace is mine. It's as simple as that. You change your mind. Decide to move to the winning team. We're all as well. There's nothing to fear. And memory of his awakens in the mind that asks the means of him whereby its sleep is done. I'm waking up today, God. Not just physically, but Spiritually, I'm waking up to your love. Just whisper that to your soul for a second before we move on. Just make that promise to yourself today. God, I'm, I'm waking up to your love. God, I'm, I'm waking up to your love. God, I'm waking up to your love. Today we ask of God the gift that he has most carefully preserved within our heart, waiting to be acknowledged. This is the gift by which God leans to us and lifts us up, taking salvation's final step himself. All steps but this we learned, instructed by his voice, but finally he comes himself and takes us in his arms and sweeps away the cobwebs of our dream. His gift of grace is more than just an answer. It restores all memories the sleeping mind forgot, all certainty of what love's meaning is. This is not the type of meal you can rush through. You gotta stop and savor it every once in a while. It's a beautiful thing. God today is literally going to take the final step to us as we acknowledge God's grace. And, you know, 
when we think, well, today's the day, that doesn't mean that tomorrow is going to be smooth sailing for all of eternity. It means tomorrow we're going to have to decide again. Am I worthy of the grace of God? Do I want to acknowledge that as an option on my menu? Do I want to clear anything else off the menu and say, God, you know what? Again today, I want the grace of God. Your grace is given me. It's on the menu. I order it. I claim it now. That's what this lesson is saying. I now know that your grace is an option. I was running the town like a woman who didn't know that I had the option of God's grace. I saw other people moving at the grace of God and I thought they must have had a good childhood. (laughs) They must have gone to a finishing school. They must know something I don't know. But today it's saying, no, this is just something you need to acknowledge, Maureen, or fill in your name. Because this grace is given to you. It has always been an option. I think I'm on number four. God loves his son. Request him now to give the means by which the words will disappear and vision first will come with knowledge but an instant later. For in grace you see a light that covers all the world in love and watch fear disappear from every face as hearts rise up and claim the light as theirs. What now remains that heaven can now what now remains that heaven be delayed an instant longer do you not see how we are literally have our toes to christmas morning god loves his daughter request him now to give the means by which the world will disappear and vision first will come with knowledge but an instant later for in grace you see a light that covers all the world in love which disappears um, and watch fear disappear from every face as hearts rise up and claim the light is theirs what now remains that heaven be delayed an instant longer what is still undone when your forgiveness rests on everything Oh, shit. There's a clause. I thought that grace was just going to come and I could still go about my ragged ways. What's this about forgiveness? Oh, yeah. Well, forgiveness is going to lay on everything when you accept the grace of God. Because when you accept the grace of God, you no longer see anything as a problem. Everything is handed over to the Holy Spirit so that it can be used for a higher interpretation that you can't handle right now, that you don't have to try and figure out, that you don't know how it's going to work out. And as long as you still want to hold on to the reins and think that you know what that that instant was for, that experience, that endeavor, that trespassing, you will continue to interpret it from the realm of ego. But if you're willing to go with the grace of God, you're just going to hand all that over to me, my love. And when your forgiveness rests on everything, then we're going to move into a realm that you didn't even know was available and you will be blessed by everything. And if you can't seem to get there, just hold that thing and, and hold it to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, you see this shit storm? I, I'll be damned if I'm not going to be blessed by it. But I can, I'll be damned if I can figure out how the hell this thing is blessing me. So you had better give me an interpretation or help me remove this from the clutches of my sticky hands. I can't roll with my own definitions anymore. I got to let him off the hook so I can be free. I got to let her off the hook so I can be free. I got to let me off the hook so I can be free. I got to let them off the hook so I can be free. What is still undone when your forgiveness rests on everything? You know, I mean, if you signed up in the beginning of this year and you thought you were going to get to the end of it without having to do some forgiveness work, forgive me. (laughs) 
for not being clear with you that this whole course is about forgiveness work. We can start with me. I'm sorry, but we're going to have to do this work. But I promise you, it's worth it. Number five says, it's a new and holy day today. For we receive what has been given us. How, how did we receive it? Because we're no longer holding all those crucifixions. We said, okay, I'm going to trade these in for grace. I could have grace instead of holding all these crucifixions. I get, I'm ready. So it's a new day, a holy day today. For we, we receive what has been given us. Our faith lies in the giver. That means our faith lies in God not our own acceptance. Why? Because my acceptance of this will vacillate. I can't put my faith in my acceptance. You know these words sound so pretty in the morning and we're like gobbling them down and then in the afternoon we're like, fuck them. (laughs) And so we go, wait a second, how can Maureen be so wily? She's definitely not the constant here. Where is the constant? Oh, the constant is God. Okay, let me put my faith in God. I can put my faith in the fact that Maureen is going to shift a thousand times today, even when she does her best. But the constant, the unchangeable is God. So let me place my faith in God. And let me forgive Maureen for being so wily. Our, our faith lies in the giver, not in our own acceptance. We acknowledge our mistakes. We acknowledge our mistakes. But him to whom all error error is unknown is yet the one who answers our mistakes by giving us the means to lay them down and rise to him in gratitude and love. So right here in this moment, your older brother, Jesus, is like, look at girl you know how to vacillate. That's for, that's for damn sure. <laughs> you know how to check out every corner in the shit storm. That's for damn sure. But I'm going to be constant with you. And you, all you do, need to do is recognize that you can't do this alone. That was a mistake. And if you're willing, I'll do it with you. I will support you. I have reached consistency. In the Course of Miracles, Jesus tells us the only difference between you and me is that I no longer think there's another choice. For me, for Maureen, I still think there's some other racket I can run. I think there's still something else I can do, some other side gig I can get into that requires me to skip the classroom of forgiveness and continue with the classroom of exclusion. I'm going to keep you outside so that I can sit closer to God. That doesn't work. So Jesus is saying, like, hey, how about this? How about you just admit that that's not going to work? You've figured that out by now, right? I mean, come on. You've kind of figured that out by now, right? And we acknowledge our mistakes, but he to whom all error is unknown, Holy Spirit, God, Jesus, Uh, is yet the one who answers our mistakes by giving us the means to lay them down. And then he's like, okay, take my hand. Rise with me in gratitude and love. We didn't get up today just to get our feet on the floor and lift our head above our hearts. We got up today to rise in gratitude and love. We got up today to literally be the light of the world, to rise like the sun rises, to shine this light of God on all things equally. This day could be such a holy day. And it says he descends to meet us as we come to him. Like the Holy Spirit, God, Jesus, like they're they're working their, their end. They're literally working their end. Like they're literally leaning toward you. <laughs> you know, they're like, come on, girl. Come on, reach for it. Reach for it. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. And he descends to meet us 
as we come to him. For what he has prepared for us, he gives and we receive. Such is his will because he loves his son. Such is his will because he loves his daughter. Such is his will because he loves his sister. To him we pray today, returning but the word he gave us through his own voice, his word, his love. Do you realize we're literally sitting with a book that Jesus dictated for you? He was like, somewhere in the ethers of time, there's going to be, my sister's going to be out there, like a prodigal daughter running wild, stressing herself out a thousand ways till Tuesday. I got to create some sort of ladder to get to her. I got to make sure that she knows how loved and precious and important she is to the plan of God. The affirmation is, your grace is given me. I claim it now. Father, I come to you, and you will come to me who asks. I am the daughter you love. I'm that one you've been searching for. I'm that one you've been leaning toward. I'm that one you've been reaching for, and I'm awake to that, and I'm reaching back. So we'll be here for two minutes with the affirmation, your grace is given me. I claim it now. And here we go for two minutes. Okay, so that's our time. And did anybody want to share anything that came up in the practice? This is Rose. Good morning. Hi, Rose. Good morning. First of all, thank you for that. That was really, that was a beautiful breakdown. And um, sometimes I think we stumble upon the most beautiful lesson every day. (laughs) 
I go, this is the most beautiful one. Uh-huh. And then tomorrow comes yeah. and I go, wait, this is the most beautiful one. <laughs> so all the lessons are beautiful, but that was my way of complimenting the way that you broke it down. So, um, <laughs> um but what I wanted to say is that I've been working on this idea that somewhere early on I took on and just the unraveling that I'm doing with it now, which is that um, the idea that that I wasn't worthy and that I never would be worthy and there's nothing I can do that will ever make me really, truly um, worthy. And so, um, so I feel like, I don't know, I just, I just feel like this is a very affirming lesson in that, um, Hey, you know, (laughs) like, uh, Jesus has got my back. God has got my back. They're there. And so it's just for me to just say, wait, am I believing that old lie that I thought I just could never possibly be loved or worthy enough? Or am I you know, really waking up to the truth that that's just not true. That's just something that I chose to believe. And I can choose again. So that's what was coming up for me. Yes. And when you choose it again, Rose, you choose it for everyone. And we're all waiting for you to choose that. So it's important it's important for you to choose that, to know that you are worthy, that you are filled with grace, and that that old idea of not being good enough is the only bouncer that waits at the door. And that bouncer, you know, that bouncer can just be patted on the head and say, thanks, you did your job, you're <laughs> excused, now you can go home. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm walking in. I, that, was, that was really good that Rose brought that up. This is how I am. Um, because I've actually been doing a lot of work about what I deem as worthy. Because I was in the, like, I do return to that pretty frequently, even after many years of the course. I still clearly have judgments about myself and other people about what makes somebody worthy. And I literally took time to write down truly be totally honest with myself, like what do I feel like makes somebody worthy? And working through that and seeing that most of the things that I attribute to worthiness are really ego centered. They're not they're not what's truly valuable and they're not solidifying my relationship with God. Um and they're not and therefore they're not sustainable because the things that we create outside of God are not sustainable. But it's Often, I think, in day-to-day life, it's hard to keep that clarity. For me, it is. Um, and so this really helps pull that sort of out out in the open. Yeah. And, and, you know, like, God didn't send us, God, we didn't fall asleep and have the, if we want to wake up, we get to relinquish all the lists. Uh, the Santa Claus list, you sometimes say Santa God, but like who's good and who's bad. Like we didn't come here to create a list. God was like, you can take, you know, that hat off because I didn't employ you as the judge of what's worthy and what's not worthy. It's all worthy. I would like for you to take the filter off of judge so that you can see the worthiness of all things. And when we get to see the worthiness of all things, it comes from one who no longer has filters. And that's what we're capable of being. Jesus saw the leper and saw the worthiness, saw the accused adulteress and saw the worthiness. He took, you know, the worthiness means I'm going to stop and take the time with you. I don't care if you're a beggar, if you're diseased, if you're broken, if you're you hung out with like uh, suppose of you know drug addicts and prostitutes who the world would deem as so unworthy and 
And yet within those encounters, he showed us how the, everything was worthy. And then we got to see the potential of ourselves. And then we got to see, man, that man's going to see me as worthy even when I'm a shit show. I hope that I get to see myself that way, and I hope I get to see my brother that way. I hope I get out of my own way so I get to see that. That's why he was such a master teacher. Go ahead. Yeah. I just think that we need to be thirsty, you know. (laughs) Even, Even on Calgary... You know, Jesus was saying, I thirst, even though he was in the midst of dire pain and suffering, he knew that there was something greater than what he was experiencing in this world. And in 2020, I became really, really thirsty because I knew that what the world was showing me was not what I wanted, and that there was something Mm -hmm. beyond this world that I needed. And because I was so thirsty for truth, I saw God in a greater way, in a deeper way. And, you know, Jesus said, you know, you know, out of my belly, living waters will flow. And, and, and that's grace, you know. Um, and, and unless we are ready to claim it, it's going to be available, but unless we're willing to claim it, we won't even know. I know, and I know, I know. Uh, thank you, Reverend Sethal. Thank you, Reverend Celeste, Reverend Rose, Reverend uh, Sally Ann. They've got such great teachers here today. Yeah, I, I know that. Now, what prevents me from claiming it? My judgment, my fear, my going rogue, my blocks. And this book is not about love. This book is about removing the blocks to love. So that claiming it is like breath. So that claiming it is like, of course. So although we make it sound easy today, like, you know, you just got to claim it, like, you're going to come up against yourself. and who you decide is worthy to get on and off the bus. You're going to come up against yourself and your preferences. And your, your preferences are going to attempt to steal your peace of mind a thousand times today. And so each time that preference comes up, it's supposed to be like this. It's supposed to have more salt. They're supposed to be like this. The kids are supposed to be quiet. How come I'm such a loser? Oh, my God, everybody else's kids are going to college. I'm re- <laughs> I'm raising house cats here. (laughs) Nobody's launching anywhere. (laughs) Every time I want to have a preference, I got to say, Holy Spirit, you got the plan. You got the range. You got the wheel. I'm in for the ride. I'm going to go with grace. You're going to show me how this all makes sense. You're going to show me how to take the time with the leper the person I don't want to take time with. And you're going to show me how not only do I have grace, but I have it to spare. Like, I got so much grace, I don't even know what to do with myself. I don't know about you, but, like, I'm up for that. Anybody else want to share before we put this into prayer? What a beautiful gift we have as we approach our walk to Bethlehem, that we're going to go with grace. What a beautiful invitation for today. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it into prayer unless anybody else wants to um, add anything to prayer. <laughs> 